Good morning. My name is Danny Friedman. I'm the moderator and host of Dutch IT Channel Executive People of numerous occasions. Recently led the Gardner Analyst Session in Barcelona live on a digital platform. And today I'm going to have a talk with John Barron, some insight on the impact and also opportunity of augmented reality and virtual reality in the CIO IT space. John, thank you for having us. Thank you for being here. Uh, live from Amsterdam, yeah. Yeah. physically not present, of course, but also due to COVID, we're going to talk in the next 15 to 17 minutes about what you're doing as an immersive tech lead. Yes. First, for the people who don't know you, John, could you introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. I'm the real John Barons. I'm the immersive tech lead, as you said, for Insight in EMEA. Um, I live in Amsterdam with my family. I've been here for three years. It's such an innovative place and the company is booming in this space. And I look forward to delving into the topics with you. Perfect. I think for, let's first start out also with maybe a little bit context on what AR and VR, augmented reality and virtuality, the difference between the, the two both, John. Could you highlight us a little bit, to take us to that, to that? Yeah, it's a very common question and really a good one up front because what they should be defined as is more of a separation in terms of uh, augmented reality being a real digital overlay of the real world. So with the emphasis on the real world being your operating environment and virtual reality being a fully immersive experience where you're almost taken to another world and you're not so aware, you're more isolated of your physical surroundings. Yeah. Um, and interestingly, I see these two technologies merging um, somewhat in, in the future with you know, the option of having full immersion and then yep. switching quite easily to the more sort of spatially aware type, uh, type solutions with augmented reality. Yeah, so your life also has changed due to COVID-19, uh, John? living at home and, and connecting with people around the world in a, probably the same way we're having this interview right now. Can you, can you elaborate a little bit, tell us a little bit about how the impact of COVID-19 has accelerated the adoption and pace of ER and VR? Yeah, that's a, a great question. The, the answer to that is, um, I've, for me personally, um, I've found the collaboration with colleagues um, a, able to be much more personal in the sense that you can put on a headset much like this and yep. see your colleague's avatar. So like a scanned version of their real face, probably with a stupid fixed expression on it. Yeah. Um, but inside, inside a space gesturing with their hands because this technology has hand, hand tracking enabled and also a, being able to collaborate inside that space. So, you know, whether that's doing design thinking workshops or you know, exploring a physical object or a hologram to discuss that's design, um, we, we operate inside that space. But for um, industry, I would say a great example is probably in the medical profession yeah. where you know, social distancing is, is absolutely imperative. Um, training in, in this space as well. I think a, a, a classic example um, for social distancing would be in remote assistance. So when you've got this headset on, you can, you've got some cameras here that will be showing the other person, the remote yep. expert, exactly what you're looking at so that your hands are free. And mm -hmm. if you're a surgeon um, in one of the uh, older Hay Children Hospital in the UK yep. the public sector, those guys were doing open heart surgery on children um, where you could collaborate with other surgeons from any part of the world um, or educate students with a real close-up look at you know exactly what's going on so in some senses it's an actual improvement of, pre of previous um, previous ways of working yeah. um, because that training wouldn't have been possible for hygiene type reasons or um, you know just not being able to have the, the exactly. angle to see the work that's going on um, yeah. at, at such close proximity um, and as well as avoiding things like um, the need for PPE, so personal protective equipment. Yeah. Yeah. You just don't need, you know, that many people with that much equipment when they can yeah. virtually be there. Yeah. Any time of day or night. Yeah. Any, anywhere. 
And do, do you think, John, that that the current phase where the world is that we're you know we're less traveling, we're much focused on circularity, on getting the message across, and also you know extending the way we communicate between people has given you an opportunity to move towards board level, IT executive, CIO level to talk about this. Yeah, it's a real door opener, this technology. And, you know, people are seeing it hit the mainstream. It's really matured in the last year, year and a half, I would say, mm -hmm. with uh, Microsoft's release of the HoloLens 2, so the second generation, huge advance on the first technology. Mm -hmm. um, lots of players entering the, the enterprise space. Really quick ROI for yeah. executives where, you know, they're just saving the cost of, travel, um, of equipment, um, and, you know, that's, that's up front. That's, yeah. that's yeah. instant. So it's really easy to convey the, the, the savings um, yeah. in order to be able to reinvest further into this technology yeah. and explore more and more use cases. Yeah. There are two companies which we know, of course, as a consumer perspective and one, of course, in the, also in the business perspective, that are working hard, but also investing in technology, Facebook and Microsoft, the, the Oculus and HoloLens. Yeah. If, 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 if people don't know those technology, what, what is the primary distinction between the both, uh, John? Yeah, so virtual reality would be aligned to the Oculus and augmented reality with the, with the HoloLens. Um, so if you wanted a full immersive experience, uh, for example, you know, transported to a whole nother um, physical environment or to do a fully immersive tour or, you know, travel type experience or a training simulation where you're in a totally um, unique environment. Again, yeah. you know, reducing the need to, to travel for those things. Yeah. You would go for a full virtual reality type experience. If you are wanting to do something that's more related to the space that you're in, um, you, you're needing to go with augmented reality to be able to say, I'm working on a physical engine here. Yes. Yep. Um, and you know, I need some remote expertise with people sharing schematics with me or drawing, annotating on the screen and being able to you know, capture videos and work inside a, a space that a little bit more uh, safely where you're not gonna trip over a chair yep. <laughs> for example, because you can't see what's around no. you. Yeah, and and going then back to Insight, John, because you work with a, with a very large IT company that is uh, also investing a lot in tech. You're the immersive tech lead. Does this also mean that this change you see at Insight, but also the discussion we have here with you, CI, CIO leaders and IT leaders, that this is a structural change to look at VR and ADR for specific solutions? Yeah, um, remote assistance, training, yeah. um, collaboration, and uh, design is, is, is another one as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, in the construction space there as well, you, you'd be able to plan out different stages of, of, of design and imagining it through the, you know, the, through the piping, through to the putting up the walls, through to putting up, you know, all the fixtures and fittings. Uh, and that, that kind of thing. So there's so many different applications and, and use cases that are cross industry um, that it's with, with CIOs, they, they can yeah. often get introduced through, through the remote expertise scenario, but very, very quickly see the benefits in things like um, guides, which is from yeah. Microsoft in using holograms to train their staff and it has real statistical evidence to back it up that people who have gone through these type of training programs, um, you know, they're visual, visual learners. Most people yeah, are, yeah. and they retain a lot more information. So when they go to complete tasks in the real world, yeah. it, it, statistically, they're completing them right and they're completing them faster. Um, and, you know, that's, that's compelling, compelling for yeah. tra training in any industry. Yeah, is the what do you what do you feel about the adoption of these technologies, John? Is is it going as fast as you hoped it has been? The adoption of technologies, well, you know, there's a mental barrier for people, um, and they really need to get their hands on this kit and not be afraid of it because mm. 
you know, you could simplify it down to being a kind of PC um, on your on your head, you know, yeah. and we're all familiar with mobile phones and uh, laptops and the need to manage the security of those kinds of devices. This is another kind of device that can be rolled out inside your enterprise and managed in a very, very similar way with security mm. policies, with software distribution, with reporting, Interesting. All, yeah. all, of, all of those kinds of things. So um, that's just a, a mental barrier. And then yeah. if you're using it in a certain uh, scenario at work, um, then, you know, at Insight, we've got adoption and change management experts that are quite technology yeah. agnostic and would really help, you know, people who are resistant to change um, experience this in a really positive way that's, you know, going to teach them new things and make them more valuable. The bell, and, yeah. and, of course, leaders in industry, you know, are always looking for ways to inspire their staff. Yeah. And in turn, their staff inspire their their customers with yeah. all these all these new ideas, which are, as I say, mainstream and, and available today. Yeah, 2020 is almost done. We're in the we're looking towards Christmas uh, in a couple of weeks to spend some time with our families. John, if you look at 2021 and the years to come, are there specific trends or innovation which you will see will also capture this opportunity for VR and AR? Um, there's a lot of new players coming to the market. Um, so they, uh, you know, Apple, you know, the, the elephant in the room here, um, you know, what are they going to do? When are they going to do it? What happened to Google, Google Glass, you know, the original yeah. augmented reality? Well, I, I feel like Apple's going to, you know, make a play very soon um, with its own super stylish version of a glass designer yeah. type, type look. Um, and that's going to be, you know, able to be used across enterprise and uh, day to day yeah. in terms of, you know, enabling things like navigation and, you know, accessibility features for people that uh, can't get around so yeah. easily. So just bringing so much contextual information um, inside business, but also, also generally, um, and just the general technology is getting so much better that, you know, you could have um, soon, 8K, you know, for, for each eye. And um, there's, you know, it's almost like human level or the human mm -hmm. eye type, uh, type definition available inside of these units in the next, yeah. uh, in the next year or so. So you're going to be, you know, yeah. you're going to be really experiencing um, a, a real alternative reality. To wrap this, this conversation up also due to time, John, if you look at the your partner network of Insight, how is it how important is it for you in your role to work with partners in your ecosystem to build on these innovations? Yeah, no, thanks for asking that. What we do as Insight, our real value add, is being that agnostic provider of all the different hardware options, the headsets that are available yep. to, to you today, the different software vendors, that are out there that have done the hard work and the heavy lifting and built these solutions for industry already and the services needed to adopt those. So we bring those all together. We've yeah. got great partnerships um, that we that you know we're of great value to to each other. Really helping with our global presence to be able to deliver this technology in a way that's lasting, secure, and scalable through our services um, and the provision of the software and hardware in a way that suits the client wherever they might be. Yeah. And Insight will be a partner for those customers and, and also your network to build on those promises, right, John? Yes, we have so many existing yeah. customers through our history of being a hardware reseller and license provider and now moving into services and very innovative services like this. So we've already got so many relationships. We understand these industries. Yeah. And so with the partners that we work with, um, you know, they're leveraging us, of course, for our existing relationships and um, knowledges of industry. Yeah, and building value towards the future, of course. Yeah. John, thank you for your time and making time available digitally in this uh, talk with Dutch IT channel and executive people. John Behrens, Immersive Tech Lead uh, inside EMEA. John, also for my, for my person too, stay safe and uh, we'll see each other soon, hopefully at some time physically. Thank you for, for listening. Dank je wel voor het luisteren. Be safe and have a good 2020 year end. Bye-bye. Thank you, Val.